Scotland has not seen any of the anti-immigration agitation which provoked riots in many English towns and cities last week. While there are several political differences between North and South of the border, today we're looking at the immigration policies of the UK and Scottish governments. Scotland needs more immigration. Our official statistical body, the NRS, National Records of Scotland, showed that the birth rate here fell in 2023 to an average of 1.3 births per woman, a new low which continues the downward trend of several decades. The replacement rate, which would keep the long-term population at the same size, is 2.1 births per woman, so the current low number means that a population will age and in a few years actually start to decline. When you add on the welcome news that old people are living longer, you get a serious shortage of young people of working age. The Scottish Fiscal Commission says that the future workforce will not raise enough in taxes to pay for the health needs and general upkeep of a growing percentage of pensioners. Future Scottish governments will have three choices, to raise the tax rate on workers, to cut public spending, or increase immigration. Both Scotland's birth rate and net migration figures are lower than in the UK as a whole, and the NRS predicts that Scotland's population will go into decline from the mid-30s onwards. This is a serious and immediate policy problem. Of course, one way of tackling a low birth rate could be to use tax or other incentives to encourage more pregnancies. And Scotland already has a child payment, unlike the rest of the UK. This, however, has not yet produced any increase in the number of babies. On the other hand, the punitive policies of the late Conservative governments in cutting off welfare payments beyond the second child had almost no effect on birth rates there. In fact, birth rates fell by 1%, only 1% during the period of the two-child cap, and so its only effect has been to plunge the third and fourth children into poverty. What is the Scottish Government's attitude to immigration? Well, firstly, the Government wants migration policy devolved to Holyrood. For years, ministers here have demanded this change. Fiona Hislop, then External Affairs Secretary, said in 2019 that the UK Government's anti-migration policies were disastrous for Scotland's economy, particularly in sectors like tourism, hospitality, construction, financial services, and agriculture. The Scottish Government policy paper Building a New Scotland claims that the UK migration policy does not work for Scotland's economy and that we need people to come here from other countries. Is there a solution under a devolution settlement? If the Scottish Parliament could agree on its own fairer and less restrictive routes to working here, the new Scottish tax code would mean that workers attracted here would not be allowed to get employment in the other parts of the UK. So devolving immigration to Edinburgh would allow Scotland and the rest of the UK to follow their separate policies. However, in spite of the demand being made frequently by the current and previous First Ministers, there was no chance of the Conservative government giving that power to Scotland. So what about the new Stammer government? After all, we voted for change. If there is no solution under devolution, then how would independence change Scotland's immigration policy? Well, the Scottish Government proposes a live-in Scotland visa, which would allow people to move here and take up jobs and bring their families with them. Obtaining the visa would be based on the skills these people would bring with them, including English language skills, and then matching those to the needs of employers. The Scottish Government could also use this visa to support the declining population in the countryside and on the islands. The Government also proposes a Scottish Connections visa to encourage people who left Scotland or their younger relatives to come home. These visas would last for five years, thus giving the opportunity to apply for Scottish citizenship at the end of that period. The government also proposes a fairer and more humane asylum policy, which would be quicker and cheaper to apply, and should not lead to long waiting lists at the assessment centres. None of these necessary measures will come in unless the Starmer government makes the surprise decision to listen to the Scottish government and allow for a separate immigration policy. They could do that by amending the Scotland Act of 2016. However, if Scotland's future prosperity depends on persuading more people to come here, then the UK government needs to look at the problem from their angle too. The English birth rate at 1.6 babies per woman is also historically low and also below their replacement rate. England too needs more young workers. And that's the truth about immigration. Thanks for watching. I'm Hugh News for Scotland. We'll be back soon.